My name is Dr. Palmer Evans. I'm the uh, former chief medical officer at Tucson Medical Center. I also am the immediate past chairman of Arizona Connected Care, which is a Southern Arizona accountable care organization. And I'm also a member of the board of the Pima Council on Aging. And uh, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what's, what I think is happening and why I think you should vote against uh, the BCRA. The first thing is I think that it, the, it's important to realize that the Affordable Care Act had two parts to it. The first part, obviously, is the insurance part. And really, uh, that's the part that people are talking about now. So it's really irritating to me when I hear people saying the Affordable Care Act has failed because it doesn't take into account the clinical side of what we've been doing when the Affordable Care Act, which we actually helped write the statute for the Affordable Care Act or for the accountable care organizations in 2009. So that's the clinical side. And the work we've been doing on the clinical side, I'll talk a little bit about with the accountable care organization. So you have an idea of what's happening there. A lot of talk has been that what needs to happen is there has to be a stabilization of the insurance market. And I think that's absolutely true because that's one of the things that needs to be improved. And the Kaiser Family Foundation just recently, uh, as the last few days, uh, has published that, the, that there is a stabilization in that market. Of course, there are a few counties across the country that don't, might not have any insurance company insurance coverage. And so I think it's important that the Congress deal with that. Now, the, the, the Affordable Care Act, uh, or if you look at the BCRA, it's not a Republican or a Democrat issue. It's really an issue uh, for the country. It's a national issue. And what's been very annoying is the fact that the American Medical Association, American Hospital Association, uh, the American Nursing Association, AARP, all of these organizations have expressed uh, uh, an opinion that this should not pass. And what's been annoying to me is that we've not included them in the discussion. This should be a conversation, a national conversation, that we really look at how we really need to do a better job in healthcare. Now, the area I'm going to spend a little bit more time on is the accountable care organization. In 2009, we were one of the first accountable care organizations in the country. And let me tell you what an accountable care organization is. A simple definition is that an accountable care organization is a group of providers who agree to provide health care uh, for a given number of patients over a period of time. And if they're successful in meeting quality criteria and cost criteria and efficiencies, they're able to share in some of those uh, and some of the, um, uh, the savings. So that's a simple definition. When we first started in 2009, there were three accountable care organizations in the country. We were one of the first three. Now there are 930, and within the last several years, as this has ramped up, we've returned well over a half a billion dollars to Medicare. And that doesn't include what we've given back to uh, the payers. So what that means is that we really are making pro uh, a lot of progress on the cost side, because that's another issue that has to be addressed, is what's happening on the cost side. So one of the theories in the Accountable Care Organization was how do we t tend to try to bend the cost curve? And when we first started down this path in 2009, it was predicted uh, that the Medicare Trust Fund would run out of um, funds by 2017. Well, between a number of things happening, including all of the great work that's been doing on the clinical side, that's been pushed out to 2026. And that doesn't mean we, can still, we still need to do better. But if you look at some of the waste, the, the waste that's occurred in the, in the system, there's over $700 billion of waste every year. And I was on a panel about four years ago with uh, Dr. Berwick in, in El Paso. He was the former head of, uh, of CMS. And he said that in addition to the, seven, the $700 billion waste, part of that is about $200 billion in medical cost from medication. And I thought, $200 billion, how does that sort of fit? And he explained that if you're a person with high blood pressure, hypertension, and you go into your doctor's office and the doctor prescribes you medication to take care of your high blood pressure, 70% of the time you'll get the prescription filled, 30% of the time you won't. And after six months, 50% of them will only refill their prescriptions. So what happens? Well, what happens is that 
if you don't take your medication and you have high blood pressure, uh, you, you have the possibility of getting strokes, about, about getting heart attacks, and really doing significant damage to your kidneys, which really increases the, uh, the risk to your health care. So that's one example of, of how, this, how we need to really deal with this on the clinical side. So as far as the Arizona Connected Care and the work we've been doing, we've been able to cut our costs significantly. So we're the lowest cost provider in the state of Arizona because we've improved our quality in, uh, and have become much more efficient and we've reduced our costs. And it's doing the right thing for patients. And so finally, I started practicing actually here in Tucson in 1974. And as we go down this path, it became apparent to me, this is the first time since I started practicing medicine in 1974, that things are lining up to do the right thing for the patient. Things are lining up to do the right thing for the patient. Now, what do I mean by that? That means that we provide care through the continuum. They're not discharged from the hospital and said, you know, call and make an appointment with your primary care physician who doesn't even know you've been in the hospital. It's re we're required to be able to manage that carefully. And through managing the, the continuum and managing medical costs and managing drug costs, we're able to really do a much better job. And that has to be done throughout the whole system in order for it, for it to work more efficiently. So that tells you a little bit about what accountable care organizations. There's another program called bundling, where in other, in other one of the, the goals of this is to get away from the fee-for-service uh, issues that we've had over the years, which is a perverse incentive that pays physicians to do things. And we feel, and we know, that by paying physicians to, to do things and see patients and do procedures, uh, that it causes them to do things, not a, a lot of them, that maybe don't need to be really done. So what we're looking at is creating what's called a value-based system. And that's the direction that the clinical side, all of us, the AMA and all of the people involved in this are, are working to, all the accountable care organizations. So what that means, because you say, well, what does value-based care mean? I think a simple way to understand value-based care is that it's doing what the patient needs, but doing it much more efficiently. In other words, how do we get rid of some of that waste, and how do we take care of patients and do it much more efficiently? And that's the goal of, of the clinical side, what we've been trying to do. And by destroying that and taking away people's insurance, uh, we are not going to be allowed, able to do preventive care, uh, which is really critical as we get down this path, because if we really want to do something about health care costs, we got to start very early when the kids are, when kids are young and they're growing up to try to prevent some of the de devastating things that happen with diabetes, with high blood pressure, with heart disease, and with cancer. So we feel very strongly that the preventive aspect is, is important. And if people don't have insurance on the Medicaid side, which are the most vulnerable patients, they're the ones that are really going to suffer from this. And the costs of health care are going to be horrendous. And who's going to be paying for that? You and me anyway. And where are the people going to go? They're going to go to emergency rooms. They're not going to be going to their physicians. So I really urge strongly that you do not pass the BCRA uh, for the benefit of, all, of the patients here in Arizona, for the patients across the country, because of what we've been able to accomplish. We cannot go backwards. We need to go forward. Now, going forward means there has to be an investment in, the, in stabilizing the markets, and, and it really has to be a, a national conversation, including both parties and the rest of us, to say, how do we do a better job of doing this? How do we take costs out of the system? How, we, how do we get rid of waste? How do we do a better job of taking care of patients? And how do we bend that cost curve? So that, by, so that we can extend the Medicare, Medicare Trust Fund out for years to come.